Hey y'all, I'm so excited to show you how I turned this builder grade pantry into this beautiful mini butler pantry. Come along and I'll show you how. I started by enlisting some helpers for my girls and we cleaned off the bottom two shelves of the pantry. My goal was to try and preserve these pieces because I wanted to reuse them in the new build to try and save money. I want this to be a budget-friendly project. I also feel like a lot of pieces can be reused in other projects later, so I try to be really careful when I take things out. So I decided to only remove things from the bottom two shelves because I'm going to be working mostly with those two spaces. I'm going to remove those bottom two shelves and move them down. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is demo. I'm going to be removing this shelf and this shelf. And I'm not going to be doing much to these. Yes, I know they look terrible. Don't worry, they'll look pretty in the end. But I'm not going to be reconstructing anything in here. Just these two. So in order to remove something, I'm going to show you how. I have my knife. This is just a regular blade and I'm gonna take it and score the edges and then pop it out and it's not always as simple as it should be but hopefully I'm gonna try really hard not to damage these because I'd like to reuse them in the new build process save myself a little money so wish me luck so I'm gonna start by using my blade to score around where all the caulking is in order to hit that shelf out of its place gently maybe I should say tap tap that shelf out of its place. So I'm gently tapping with the hammer on the underside after the caulk is scored. And you'll see, you can watch it break apart from the wall. So I did this all the way around the back end of the shelf to try and pop those nails up out of there. And then I get to try and manpower my way through lifting them out of their spot. The first one was pretty easy, the second one proves to be a little more difficult. Okay, so this is basically all caulk right through here, all the way back, and they even caulked the underside, which is great. That's very nice of them. Um, but we need to score all the edging of the caulk all the way around and on the underside as well. And you wanna get it till you can feel the drywall behind it. So you're going through the caulk all the way. So I'm basically just repeating the same process on this upper shelf as well. Okay, so sometimes these pieces overlap, so you've got to take them out in order. So you can see that this one butts up to this one. So this one needs to come out first in order for that one to pull out. And then this one butts up against this one, which means this one needs to come out first. And then I can take this one out. So all I've done is I've scored with my knife underneath the same way as with the shelves. And now I'm just taking this putty knife and I'm just kind of popping it. If you have a teeny tiny crowbar, those work really well. And of course I can't put mine. So a knife will do, as long as it's nice and thick. And that's it. And this is just held on with some brad nails, construction adhesive just on the edges, or caulk. It feels like it's caulk, but in some parts there's construction adhesive. But it's not on the drywall. The construction adhesive um, is just between pieces sometimes. And I'm guessing that's just for strength purposes. 
So now I'm just going to remove all these molding pieces that are called cleats all the way around and then it's time to cut the shelf down just slightly. As I moved the shelves down lower, I realized that my walls were not square. They were tapering in just slightly, so I needed to cut the shelves down just a little bit. Now I'm keeping all the cleats, so I need to remove these nails. And if you take some needle nose pliers and wiggle them back and forth, these nails just break off. It's super easy, doesn't damage the front, and you can reuse the board again. I want to use these same cleats as I reinstall the shelves lower. So I'm removing the nails in order to do that, and then I'll start installing. I've got the bottom shelf in here, so now I'm just measuring where I'd like the one above it to go. And 16 inches seemed to be about safe. That was a good size for boxes and storage bins and things like that, and bigger pieces at the bottom of the pantry. So I added those cleats, and then I just laid the shelves back in, and reinstalled them this way with a brad nailer all around on the cleats and then recalped. This entire pantry is only 45 inches by 46 inches, so it's a pretty tight space to be working in. I had to take everything out and it made my kitchen look like this for a few days as I finished this entire process, but that's why we needed better storage because the space is quite small. Now it's time to start rebuilding the butler pantry top or the countertop. I'm just going to be using pine wood, but first I need to build the frame. So I'm using two by twos and I'm installing them the same way, but I am using screws and installing them to studs to make sure that they're nice and strong since they will be holding my mixer and a couple other heavier appliances. So on the back piece that screws into the wall, I found the studs and I used two and a half inch Power Pro screws that don't require pre-drilling. I drilled that one into studs and now I'm using pocket holes to connect this to the back piece and then I will also drill this into the wall as well using a Power Pro screw also. It's important to use a level two to make sure that the entire countertop is straight and level the way it should be when you have appliances sitting on top, otherwise it'll drive you crazy. So I added three cross pieces and each of these were 15 inches deep. The front and the back piece plus the 15 inches in between equaled out to make 18 inches, which is what I want the countertop to be when it's all finished and installed. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the shorter side. I'll install the back piece and then the two supports for the shorter side and then the front piece. Okay, now it's time to attach the top on the inside of the pantry. And I got what's called a project panel from Lowe's. And it's 18 inches deep. And I love these. It's just made of pine. But it really saves me a lot of trouble from having to glue together a panel. And I, I could have. I went back and forth between a hardwood top and a project panel. And in the end, I landed with a project panel because number one, it's a little more cost effective. Number two, it's inside the pantry and it's going to have appliances on top of it. It really doesn't need to look the most pretty like it would with hardwood. So it'll still be gorgeous. It'll be stained. It'll fit perfectly in there. I think it will be okay. A lot of times in these homes, the walls are not straight like I said earlier, and mine definitely aren't. So I did have to reach underneath and score my wood piece to make sure that it fit correctly.
and it only fit in one direction because of the slant due to the wall being crooked. <laughs> so just be patient and play around with it a little bit. Next, I went ahead and used a golden oak stain over the top to give it the hue that I wanted for this area. This is a Minwax stain and I love it. To make it look a little more like cabinetry that's been in here, I am adding these trim pieces to the corners, to the sides, so that it looks less like floating shelves and more like it's built in. And then I may add some cross pieces here as well, but I'm gonna work on this first. So I've just cut it to the height, I've nailed it in. I added this little half inch trim piece all the way up because I had my baseboard. Because I had my baseboard there, that's a half inch baseboard. I added a little trim there, otherwise I would have had a gap. And then I put this in. And then I'll just caulk the seam. So now I'm gonna put one in at this angle and one at the other angle here for the corner and caulk the seam. And then I'll do the exact same thing over here. So I'm actually just attaching these with brad nails onto the white shelves themselves. I'm using one and a half inch brad nails to go directly through the trim and into the shelf. I did have to add a little trim piece to account for the floor molding here before I could add the piece to the front of the cabinet. Then I could do the cross pieces and again I'm just using these brad nails. Once it's caulked it will really hold it in place just fine. I'm using this DAP white caulk to fill in all the spaces around everywhere. And this is kind of tedious. It's a tedious task, but it makes a huge difference and it will add to the strength as well. So that's it for the cabinetry part. Now let's move on to the electrical. Okay, my friends, we are down to the final step. I've got most of the cabinetry built. It's ready to have baskets and things put in for organization, but there's one thing missing. I want to put all of my appliances in here. I want a mixer there, a toaster, the can opener. Um, I think that's it. I want those all in here on the counter, but there's zero plugs in this little pantry. So there is a switch which is connected to a light. I've already turned the power off right here. So now I'm gonna attempt to move the power over. Over here, I'm gonna tie it into this switch and I'll show you how. However, there is a stud right here. Normally, any electrical box that you encounter will be attached to a stud. Unfortunately for me, it's on the wrong side. So I actually need to drill through the stud. This is not code. I am not an electrician, but I'm gonna to attempt to do it anyway. All right, power is off. Lighting is really bad, obviously, because the power is off. So first thing you All right, so this is normally what's standard in most houses around in my location. It's a 14-2, and that's what I'm gonna use. And in here, you can see that our electrician has added these connectors, and these actually have four spots, thank heavens. So there's one extra in all the connections, which will be perfect for me to add my one plug. I have my hole, I'm gonna use my vacuum and clean all the debris out. And then I'm gonna try and squeeze my wire through that hole and make sure that it's big enough. So in electrical, usually you have a hot wire and you have a neutral wire and then you have a ground wire. This copper wire is the ground. Right now they have the hot for the switch going into, it's black normally, and it's going into this connector. And then they have the neutral in this connector. So I'm gonna tap directly into that and hopefully the plug will work even when the switch is off. So here is my wire and you can see there's a white, there's the copper in the very middle and then there's the black right there. And I just checked and it fits just fine right through that hole right there. 
So it goes in just fine. The trick now is going to be cutting out this side over here. I have to cut my panel for my box right there and try and find the wire. That's gonna be tricky. So I want to add a little bit of trim. So I'm gonna put the plug up high enough that I can do that. And what this is, is this is a box that will attach just directly to the drywall instead of to a stud, since I can't really get in there to do it with a stud. So it has these little wing tabs and they fold down. And when I put them inside the drywall and screw it, the wing tabs squeeze it to the drywall and it'll hold it in place. So that's the goal. So I'm gonna turn it around this way and I'm gonna trace inside these little tabs here. Those go on the outside. And then I'm gonna be using a Ryobi multi-tool. You could use a jigsaw like I showed you in my beginner woodwork series of last week, but there are some other wires in this wall and I don't want to risk hitting them with a jigsaw. This is a little easier to control. It just vibrates and it will cut through straight. So I'm going to use this to cut the box out. Okay, now I've got my piece coming out this side, got this side, I'm gonna cut this right here. And now I'm gonna strip the outside of this off with a knife so that I have wires to work with. Ooh, I hope I didn't make it too short. That's always the problem. I'm gonna strip this off and plug it into this side and put this back and I'm gonna strip that off and add the plug. So they make actual strippers that you can wrap around your wire to cut this off without damaging the wire under, but I don't have one. So I'm just using the plain old knife, but I'm being very careful not to hit, oops, not to hit the wires themselves yet. I mean, it'd probably be fine because I'm actually taking off the top parts of that, but it has a couple cardboard pieces it's wrapped so you've got your white you've got your black and then you've got your ground your copper here so now I'm just gonna cut this excess off right here with my clippers like this like that and on these clippers if you're gonna do any kind of wiring you want one of these clippers it has these stripper pieces here for all the different gauges of wire I'm using 14 so I'm gonna to go to the 14 mark which is this middle one and all you have to do is put your little wire through it like this you clamp down not too hard but enough and you rotate your tool like this to cut that and then you pull and it will strip I think I've dulled these like a lot. And then you can pull, yeah, I made it worse. I need new ones, you guys. So you're going around the wire and then you're pulling that casing off and then you're exposing the copper wire underneath. I'm gonna do the same one here. And then I'm gonna pull that through the box before I strip it. I put my wire through the box and secured it to the drywall and then stripped back the wires on this end as well. For these plugs, you just put the neutral wire on one side and the hot wire on the other. And then there's a specific copper screw for the ground. And then you screw it into the okay. box. Okay, <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> Let's see if it worked. Um, it's not all the way screwed in, but enough for me to check and see if I did it right. And the light is off, and I wanted the switch to work even when the light was off. Oh, now the light's on. Okay, light's off. <sighs> Woo! I did it! I'm so excited. I put that plug in. Next, I finished screwing it in and added the plate over the top. And it was done.
Now I'm gonna use this cabinet paint to go over the top of the white cabinets again one more time. It had some scuffs and things and this cabinet paint dries really hard like an enamel and it's great for cabinets and furniture. I use it all the time. Then I'm gonna take a light sanding to the top before I add a clear coat. I use a 220 sandpaper to kind of rough it up a little bit after staining. And then I'll use a clear coat right on the top. I did add these toe kick drawers to the very bottom where there was an extra like six inches or so, but I'm gonna save those for a separate video. I wanna make sure to give you all the information and this video is already kind of long. So look for the toe kick video that's coming out soon. I will link the clear coat that I like the best and what I used on the top of this in the description below. You guys can check that out. Next, we pulled everything out. I had a friend of mine come over, Michelle from the Glitzy Pair. She's awesome. She does a lot of organization. We put the appliances in there and then began to put things into bins and organize all that we had. I found a lot of these bins at Walmart and Target with the help of my friend Michelle and then I found these clear little jars at Walmart and I love them for our protein powders and all the things that we want to grab really fast. Plus they're kind of pretty to decant and just leave out on the countertop. It's so nice to have everything organized and have a place for everything. It helps keep things just in order and feel clean. I love how it came out and I love having my appliances off my kitchen counters. Thanks for watching. You guys can find me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and stay tuned for that toe cake video. I think you're going to like that a lot.